name is Connor Dooley, and today is December 4th, 2017. Our first story is actually not from North Korea this week. Instead, our first story comes from the Middle East, more specifically Syria and Iraq. Officially, as of right now, there are supposed to be 503 U.S. troops in Syria and 5,262 troops in Iraq. But according to the most recent Pentagon quarterly report, there are approximately 1,720 troops in Syria and 8,892 troops in Iraq. Not much is known of why more troops are currently in these countries, except for the fact that they have been helping the northern Syrians in the capture of Islamic State-held Raqqa in Syria. Of the soldiers there, some are trainers and even special ops, which makes operations even more suspicious. As more details become available, we will be sure to provide updates. Now over to Cottrell Staten with some tech and internet updates. <laughs> Thanks, Connor. So in recent months, you've been cracking down on kid-friendly channels for being inappropriate and trying to make YouTube more creative and fun for kids. And now it's looking like it's not working. About 270 kid-friendly channels have been taken down for being just downright inappropriate. From Elsa giving birth to Minions drinking pee. It's looking like it's getting out of hand. And now to another topic. A 14-year-old boy has been sued by Epic Games for using cheat codes in their new popular game, Fortnite Battle Royale. The mom of the boy wrote a letter that has been shared online that states that the boy is a scapegoat and only 14 years old and a minor being that he's not 18 and is not old enough to take responsibility for his actions and is old enough to be sued. And if you want more details on this, you can go to bbc.com for more information and get more in detail what she wrote on there. And now back to Des Connor. Thank you, Cottrell. We now send you over to Lexi with Pop Culture. Thanks, Connor. Hello, I'm Alexis Carlbaum with your arts and entertainment news. First, television star Meghan Markle and fifth in line for the British throne, Prince Harry, are engaged. As Markle's relationship with the Prince Blossom, the British tabloids and social media commenters fixated on the fact that she's not British, had been married before, and comes from a biracial background. Her ethnicity, in particular, spurred tabloid coverage to that extent that her now fiancé warned the media to stop harassing her last year. Their wedding will take place in the spring of 2018. On to our next story. Ex-NBA player Ben Gordon was arrested in L.A. Monday afternoon after allegedly roughing up a guy at an apartment building and leaving with several thousand dollars of his money. Law enforcement sources said the 34-year-old went to the apartment complex where he used to live in an effort to get a security deposit back. There, dis there was a dispute about the money and Gordon allegedly put hands on the guy and threatened him. The man gave Gordon at least some of the money back, mostly because he was scared, and Gordon left. The man called the police moments later, but get this, after cops arrived to the building, Ben returned to demand the rest of his security deposit, a couple thousand dollars. Instead, cops arrested him on the spot for felony robbery. He was hauled to a nearby station where he was booked, under, booked and later released on $50,000 bail. Gordon has had all sorts of trouble with the police lately. He was placed on psychiatric hold in New York City after allegedly locking himself in his, in his gym with a woman while brandishing a blade. He was also arrested in L.A. back in June for pulling fire alarms as, at his apartment complex. And FYI, Gordon reportedly made more than $84 million during his NBA career. Finally, a woman who was called a trailblazer for becoming the first person with Down syndrome to compete in the Miss Minnesota pageant won the Spear of Miss USA on Sunday. Michaela Holmgren, 22, was given the award after competing on Saturday at the pageant in Burnsville. It's the first time someone with Down syndrome has competed in a Miss USA state pageant. The 22-year-old had previously been crowned Minnesota Junior Miss Amazing in 2015 and competed in the National Junior Miss Amazing in Los Angeles. Holmgren said she, was the world, she wants the world to know that her Down syndrome does not define her. With your help, I can help break through walls. That's all I have for you today, Wilson. Now back to the desk with Connor. Thank you, Lexi. As we now move on to our next story today, we will be on the continent of Africa, more specifically Kenya, and the latest presidential election. President Kenyatta has been elected for a second term with a staggering 98% of the Kenyan popular vote. This stat, however, will come with an asterisk as only 39% of the population turned up to the polls. As the newly re-elected President Kenyatta gave his speech within the stadium, luckily Kenyatta supporters were able to have seats within the stadium. But the bigger news comes from the crowds outside of the building. A mix of Kenyatta supporters, angry they didn't have seats, and anti-Kenyatta supporters crowded the outside of the stadium. Since this was a presidentially held meeting within the stadium, there were a lot of police surrounding the stadium. 
All of them armed are reported two dead and many more were injured by riot police wielding batons and throwing tear gas. Kenyatta did not go into a lot of detail on what he will be doing to combat the military uprising that seems to be plaguing the country, but has said that he will try to be the custodian to the dreams of all Kenyans. And his supporters are all behind him. Speaking of stadiums and violence, we send you over to Ethan Asiatico for sports. Thank you, Connor. Hi, I'm Ethan Asiatico with Sports News. On Sunday, there was a Raiders vs. Broncos brawl. The brawl started off with Aqib Talib and Michael Crabtree. They were ejected from the game and was hit with a two-game suspension due to unnecessary roughness and for a full-on fight on the field. What started this brawl? Well, this was not the first incident between them two. Last year, Aqib Talib snatched Crabtree's necklace during the game, but Crabtree did not react to it because he said they would have kicked him out the game. So he left it alone. But he did find it disrespectful. But this time, Aqib Talib was guarding Michael Crabtree, and Crabtree was then pushing Aqib into the sidelines after the play was over, bumping into sev several people during the scuffle. Aqib ripped Crabtree's necklace off once again, which triggered the fight. Aqib then ripped off Michael Crabtree's helmet and threw it to the sidelines. The Broncos bench tried pulling them both off from each other, but and m much more NFL players were heated. Many fights broke off between Broncos bench and the Raiders bench, with officials trying to break up the fight. But once Crabtree was pulled off, he would then run near the end zone, and him and Aqib exchanged some words. And Aqib then threw a punch to Crabtree, and Crabtree then returned with two punches. And the fight ended there because they, their teammates pulled them off. They were then escorted off the field. That is all for you we have today. I'm Ethan Asatigo with Sports News. Have a great day, Wilson. Now back to the desk with Connor. Today, we throw you over to Tatiana Hilario. Hi, I'm Tatiana Hilario here with an update on the latest events around the world today. On Wednesday, November 15th, the Argentine Navy lost contact with the ARA San Juan submarine. 44 members on board of the submarine are possibly facing death due to a failure in the battery system that was reported by the captain moments before they lost signal. The water vessel has been missing for about a week now, and according to Argentine Navy spokesman Enrique Balbi, it has sufficient fuel, water, and oil and oxygen to operate for weeks without external help. The sub could raise a tube to the surface to charge batteries and provide fresh air for the crew, but if it doesn't surface, the oxygen may only last seven days. The Argentine Navy is scattering the South Atlantic Ocean on the hunt for missing submarine. If they don't locate the vessel soon, the crew of 44 may be out of oxygen by Wednesday, November 29th. The crew has still not yet been found. Keep your hopes up and keep them in your prayers. That's all for this report. Have a nice day, Wilson. Now back to the desk with Connor. Thank you, Tati. That's all we have time for this week on Wilson Worldwide. And as always, for Control Staten, Tatiana Hilario, Ethan Asiatico, and Alexis Carabon, my name is Connor Dooley, and I wish you all a splendid week. Thank <laughs> you.